We've been working on how the uterus develops regular organized contractions, a biological problem in which energy plays a key role. Disorder, such as you see on my desk, is what you expect in this world because of the second law of thermodynamics, which says that entropy or disorder will gradually increase. And if we look at the surface of Mars, we can see what this means with total disorder. And yet, when we look at the surface of Earth and come in closely, we see quite the opposite. We see high levels of order. How can this order be generated against the second law of thermodynamics? The answer is life. Life captures the energy from the sun and creates order. How exactly life began is unclear, but one possibility is that the alternating light and darkness created by the Earth's rotation creates periods of cold and warmth. This could be seen as being like a giant PCR machine that can melt RNA and then allow it to freeze again with a doubling of the amount of RNA with each rotation of the Earth. Over millions of years, this may have created the necessary substrate of RNA to allow the development of life. However it began, life uses the energy of the sun to replicate proteins, RNA and DNA. And this allows the capturing of the sun's energy and the use of that energy to create the order that we see around us on our planet. We use energy to create the order seen in our bodies. The highest levels of order occur in our brains and our hearts. And during pregnancy, blood flow increases dramatically to the uterus to allow the generation of order within the fetus. Between the 10th and the 26th week of pregnancy, a quarter of a million neurons are added to the baby's brain every minute. This is an incredible demonstration of order and must have energy to create that order. The body also invests heavily in order within the heart and within the heart, a key aspect is regular sustained contractions that pass blood through the heart, carrying energy to the rest of the body. As I speak to you, my heart is contracting regularly in a very structured, organized process, as shown by my cardiac ultrasound. This order requires a pacemaker, which then directs the contractions of the atria and the ventricles, a highly ordered process. But let's think about the uterus. The uterus also has to generate regular ordered contractions. And yet the uterus has no pacemaker. How can it generate organized, regular contractions without a pacemaker? For the majority of pregnancy, the uterus is relaxed. It has a high level of symmetry. There are no big changes going on. And yet, as we get into labor, it transforms into an organ that has regular, sustained, synchronous contractions, which develop enough pressure within the uterus to expel the baby through the narrow pelvis and into our world. We think the way this happens is related to what are called coupled oscillators. Coupled oscillators are units that can be engaged into synchronous behavior, a bit like pendulums on grandfather clocks. Each muscle cell of the uterus can be thought of as a potentially coupled oscillator. Early in pregnancy, the muscle cells are 
quite separate from one another and they don't exhibit coupled oscillatory behaviour. But late in pregnancy, under the increasing influence of oestrogen and with the withdrawal of progesterone action, this all changes. The cells become linked to one another by what are called gap junctions made of the protein Connexin 43. Also, the resting plasma membrane potential changes so that it becomes easier for the cells to depolarize and fire off. In addition, changes in potassium channels means that depolarizations can last longer. These factors together allow the muscle cells to start to become linked together so that when one cell fires, the one next to it is more likely to fire. As pregnancy gets closer to labour, the number of gap junctions increases quite dramatically, allowing more and more muscle cells to be linked together into areas or patches within the uterus. When these patches get big enough, when they contract together, it causes an increase in the intrauterine pressure. An increase in intrauterine pressure will also cause stretch on the remaining muscle cells. And stretch is a powerful stimulus to contraction by muscle cells. This can allow all of the muscle cells within the uterine wall to become linked together into synchronous behavior to increase the intrauterine pressure that in turn causes the delivery of the baby. A way to think of this is like the behavior of a crowd at a soccer match, where without any conductor, the crowd can begin to sing together and eventually the whole of the crowd at the soccer match can sing a song together completely without a conductor. They've engaged like coupled oscillators, each member of the crowd listening to the people around them to gain cues on when to sing. The loudness of an individual singing allows people nearby to hear in the same way as the strength of a depolarization and the connectivity of the muscle cells allows muscle cells to come together for synchronous behavior. This is quite different to the behavior of the heart, which is much more like the behavior of a conductor with an orchestra, where the conductor gives signals to the orchestra to allow them to behave in a synchronous and ordered manner. He can organize changes in the tempo, he can organize changes in different parts of the orchestra, but that is very different to the uterus, where Coupled oscillatory behavior can allow the emergence of robust, powerful contractions without any pacemaker. Evidence for this view of uterine action comes from the work in Little Rock, Arkansas, where the SARA facility allows superconducting magnets to identify depolarizations within small areas of the uterus. Their data shows this development of synchronous behavior across patches of the uterus, eventually spreading to the whole of the uterine wall as the woman gets closer to delivery of the baby. This is a video to go together without paper. Why the heart is like an orchestra and the uterus is like a soccer crowd. And I'm speaking to you on behalf of my co-authors, David Banny, Roger Young, Mohammed Mts, and Jonathan Paul. <laughs>